Hey, hey guys, my name is Jay. Today I'm going to show you how to build a computer from scratch. And not just a regular computer, but a super fast computer. We're going to use a gigabyte motherboard. Okay, this supports uh, Intel processors. I'm going to be using the fastest processor as of right now. Intel i7 processor 8 gen. Okay. The processor itself is very expensive. 16 gig of DDR4 memory. Two pieces of eight. One 240 GB SSD hard drive. 500 watt uh, power supply. And a regular uh, CD, DVD, player, button, etc. Okay, and I will be using a mid size casing for that, which has a glass on the side. This is a glass. It has three built in fans, which comes with it big fans for better airflow. I'm planning to take either this one, the middle one, or the last one, take it out, and put it in the back. Um, for better flow. The casing looks pretty good. Uh, this is how it looks. It goes on top. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you. See red. Red in the bottom. So it looks pretty good. Alright. Let's get to it. This glass, I'm going to take this out of the way so it does not break. Okay, the motherboard comes with the, the SATA cable and the motherboard itself. I don't think it comes with anything else. Oh yeah, this, this plate which goes in the back here. Uh, this manual is very important. It has, I don't know if you can see it, but it has these, um, tells you exactly where to plug in the wires for the casing. So this we're going to need. And that's it. Don't really need the CD. This is the motherboard. It has four 3.0 USB HDMI, HDMI right here, four 3.0 USB Ethernet, VGA, DVI, two regular 2.0 USB, and the serial port. No, not the serial port. The PS2 mouse or keyboard. Okay, so we're going to install this. And to align it with the holes here, um, this side will go out. But before we do that, we need to put this plate, which comes with the motherboard. And what I usually do is that I put it in here just to make sure that do I have it right. So I just match it the three. Uh, audio mic and all that the DVI and everything match it and this is the way it will go in here so let me put this down see these grooves I don't know if you can see these grooves they need to sit in there and then you have to push this out and it will lock these dots you see right here this this piece will lock in here and then you can put your your motherboard easily so align it and then push from the top there you go now it's sitting good and then just push it in there you go 
And once I do that, these holes, one, there's one right here, and one right here. All those holes, they align with the casing, okay? okay. All right, so just to recap, um, before installing the motherboard, I had to install these little screws. I don't know if you can see it. These little screws on on the casing itself. Okay? So what I did was I aligned the motherboard first and I checked these holes, four holes, where they meet in the casing in the in the case right and I did that and I figured one of this screw right here was missing one of this was missing and one of this was missing so I had to put these three in they did give me extras I put that in now I can easily put this motherboard and it will sit on those um, screws properly because when I'm gonna screw in the motherboard that's where they're gonna go in so so these are the little screws these are this is the male version the one I put underneath is the female version of these screws all right that's good when another thing I wanted to show you is see when I set this motherboard look how well it aligns okay all the inputs are sitting very well inside this uh, steel, this little trim. Okay. All right. So the next, we're gonna uh, put this uh, HD audio cable that goes in right here. You see where it says F audio, and the the one is blank. As you can see, this has one blank also. So it's just you know. Um, put it the right way. So, um, and make sure it's, uh, it's plugged in all the way. And then there's this cable right here. This cable goes to the USB 3. And there are a few more cables. As you can see, this one says power, power SW, and the other two says power, let me see, it says uh, plus PLED and minus PLED, and the next one says HDD, it's a hard disk drive LED. Alright, those wires needs to be plugged in right here, so the one, um, with the HD, it's gonna go in here, okay. Which is this one right here. Uh, positive PLED and negative PLED is gonna go on this side, right here. One and two, okay. Power light is gonna go on this end right here. Restart, which is RES plus and minus. This is a restart one will go on this end right here one and two okay and I believe that's pretty much it for these are the connections for the front uh, buttons for the casing so this is what it will look like one wire goes right here this is the USB 3 all the lights restart and power button for the front of the casing is goes right here these three wires are for the three fans right there so next i am going to put the ssd hard drive okay um after that i'm going to put a power supply which goes right in here okay and then I'm going to plug in the, I'm going to install the processor and the heatsink fan and then the, the DDR4s. Okay. 
Okay. And this is where the SSD will go. So I'm gonna take this plate out and uh, put on the SSD. So this is the SSD. I'm gonna put it, the plugs. These uh, plugs face down. So I'll uh, put it in like this, and I'm gonna put the screws from the back. Okay, once I do that, then I'll just slide it back in this way like that. And as you can see, the plugs are um, the SATA cable and the power cable is going to go in the back. Okay. okay, so this is the power supply I'm going to use. It has a lot of wires. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass all these wires from here. I don't know if you can see my hand. See that? I'm gonna pass all these wires through this little hole one at a time and they're gonna come out right where these wires are coming out from um, and then after that I will just slide this in here so I just wanted to let uh, one thing clear out that um, not all PSU or the power supply uh, goes in the bottom some of the, it depends on the casing some casing has it all the way in, in, the, in the top um, uh, it's different locations so you based on uh, the type of casing you choose you have to figure that out how you're gonna run the wires in this case I found um, I found a hole right here uh, big enough to you know run all the wires I ran these wires one at a time because they wouldn't come all at once um, to run from here. Now this is a 24 pin uh, ATX motherboard so the 24 pin is gonna go here uh, there are usually a mistake done where you know people put in the 24 pin and you know they plug in all the wires except this one this is the ATX wire which um, um, you need to plug in in order for the computer to turn on. Turn on. Um, so I'll show you. So if you see, this is the 24 pin, which is gonna go uh, here, and this pin is gonna go on this end. Um, if you see, this has a little locking system see that you see this like this is right here this is the locking system so the locking system is gonna go on this end you see this is where it will lock same goes for the 24 pin the locking system is right here so the the, the locking side which is this is gonna go this way plus you you can never put this wrong because of you see one is a uh, square one is little round so you can never uh, put it the other way it won't fit in <clears throat> and then we have SATA, SATA cable which is these no these are the power cables um, these are the SATA cables which came um, with the motherboard this will go in okay so this right here is for the SATA cable you see uh, it has a little shape uh, it's this side is going downwards same for this one this is the for it brings the power from the motherboard to the hard drive you cannot plug this in um, uh, incorrectly anyway because of how it's made so the smaller cable will go here the bigger cable will go here this is the smaller cable as you can as you can see it has a shape and this is the power cable which will go in there so I'm going to plug in the uh, hard drive now I wanted to just uh, clear out one thing that as you can see most of the motherboards have um, a lot of inputs for uh, to plug in the SATA cable um, if you see let me see if I can pull that 
right here. You see, it says, it says SATA 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So that number follows right here. So this is 0, that is 1, this one is 2, this one is 3. And they, this, this motherboard has a little bit more. Um, and it has two more ports, which is right here. SATA, SATA 3 is the, 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 the type of SATA. And 4 and 5. So this is 4 and this is 5. Okay, this is if you want to put additional um, hard drives, a CD-ROM, DVD player, Blu-ray, burner, whatever you want to put. This goes all that here. So I'm not really putting all that. Um, the only thing is that when you're um, installing multiple hard drives or CD-ROM, you have to make sure that the booting, the bootable device goes on zero, which is in this case this, because the zero is going to be uh, the master. Uh, this is where it's going to boot from. So when you start the computer, this is the hard drive or whatever you plug into this. Um, it'll boot based off of that based on the default settings of your motherboard you can obviously change these settings once you have the computer um, uh, started and you can go into the BIOS and you can change these settings and set the priorities on this but by default uh, going with the zero uh, it's, it's that's the master and then the rest is the slaves so um, I usually don't change that settings I just go by the default so I plug in zero here then basically the, the boot hard drive the main hard drive here then here I can plug in uh, another hard drive if I want uh, CD-ROM uh, Blu-ray Blu whatever you know extra hard drives or something all right so I put this fan right here uh, took it out from from the front so in the front there are two now used to be three and put it in the back I put it this way so the flow goes out. Yeah, let me just confirm. Yep, that's good. And this is the fan wire right here. This motherboard has several ports for for system fan. Um, there's one right here. I already plugged in the front fan. Um, other fans are connected. They had uh, given me uh, some extra wires uh, to connect the fan with the power supply. You see it's connected with the power supply. Um, and right, where is it? Well, you see these are extra ones they have given. But this one I'm going to connect on top. I don't know if you can see, it's this one. Let me see if I can get some light in there. this one right here see it says this fan this one if you see it has four pins but this has three pins but you see it has little lines right here that's how it's gonna slide in here so if you see it little closely there's a little lock in the back that lock is in front of the three three uh, wires not the fourth one so what that means that this plug can be plugged in here so this system fan uh, input is for either three pl uh, three uh, three pin or four pin either or will work so I'm gonna plug it in here this part facing towards the lock okay so now I'm gonna install the DDR4 this one uh, 16 GB kit um, the same um, there's the same setup in DDRs or any any memory as you can see right here let me get this see this says right here DDR4 is the type of the DDR 1 3 2 and 4 so they're not in 1 2 3 4 sequence obviously so what that means is that the gray one right here is 1 the black one is 3 this gray one is two and this one is four so it, it it skips one and then the other one so one two three four so if you're putting in two dims or two ddrs 
you have to make sure you put one on the first one and then the second one. Don't put it on first and third or third and second. You always want to follow the number, either one or second, that's preferable, uh, or just one. If you have only one DDR, then only put it in one. Don't put it in three, two, or four. Uh, don't skip one. So I'm going to put in one and two. 8 GB here, 8 GB here. With the DDR, you want to make sure, for any memory, you want to make sure you see that little line right here, this little dent or the gap right here. You want to match this gap with this right here. So, for example, if I put, let's say, if I put the dim like this, it's not going to match because the gap of the dim is right here, but the the, the gap on the motherboard is right here. So that's not gonna fit so I have to swap it and I have to make sure that you see now this will align this will go exactly as you can see the gap is here as well as the gap on the um, on the motherboard DDR this is where the, uh, the, the processor will go this is the locking mechanism I push down on it and then pull it out and then it comes out of the lock um, and you can just pull it up this plastic casing will come out okay. that is to protect the motherboard where the processor will ready to put in um, these are just the clips they just push in to these holes and this is the uh, processor Intel i7 uh, 8700 8th generation. Can you believe this? This processor is four and almost four hundred thirty dollars in one piece. All right. So you see this little arrow? That's on the processor. You have to match this arrow with the arrow on the motherboard. Very important. Well, first of all, it's you know it might actually go the wrong way also. Never tried that because uh, since this is so expensive, I am very careful when I'm inserting the processor. So just make sure that this arrow is in parallel to this arrow right here, so which means the processor is going to go in like this. Okay, so once the processor uh, sits in fine, the arrows are matched. You just bring this back down. Okay, pull it back. This part needs to go inside here, underneath that, underneath that screw. Once it's set in, you just push this down. And this is it's 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 uh, really hard. Um, feels like it's gonna break, but don't worry, it's not gonna break. It's supposed to be that hard. Slide it out a little bit and push it in, and that's it. This locks in. Now we have to put in the heatsink. If you see, the heatsink has this little thing, um, these three lines right here. This line is actually a thermal paste. What happens when I put this against the the processor? Processor is gonna gonna heat up. This thermal paste is going to melt, and it's gonna stick on between the processor and the thermal. Uh, the fan so that helps with the processor staying cool the thermal paste it's needed if you don't have it your processor is gonna really heat up and uh, your computer is gonna shut down so uh, placing the heatsink is very simple those four holes I showed you one two three four right here you just slide these white things in make sure you know they're sitting in once they sit in all you have to do is just push on these tabs until you hear the click sound one I usually go star 
uh, in a star shape so I, I, I don't want to press these um, I press this one first and then this one okay this one is locked it did not make a noise sound but it did lock this one is locked and this one did all right I gently pull on the fan it's it's fine and this fan wire is going to go as you can see this one has four holes the other one had three but that's fine as I uh, told you earlier either four or three the both will work with this motherboard I'm gonna plug it in here where it says sys fan which means a uh, system fan and I'm going to tie these three wires nicely up here as you can see I tied these one too so there's no clutter Okay, so I'm going to power it on. Nice. Fans are working fine. The heatsink fan is working fine. So I plugged in the uh, flash drive. That's a bootable flash drive for Windows 10 and as you can see it automatically picked up the windows so from this point I'm going to install the windows. Uh, another good thing with the USB flash drive to install the operating system is that's the fastest way to do it uh, because uh, there is no move, movable parts in it so the installation will go very quick uh, compared to if you were to do this with the, inst uh, with the CD or uh, through a network all right so we're gonna accept the terms next usually uh, we're not upgrading it because this is uh, done from scratch so we're gonna do custom install this is a 240 as uh, GB SSD uh, because of the calculations with the Windows uh, um, uh, uh, NTS formatting system it shows you 223 but it's actually 240 GB uh, you have an option to create multiple uh, drives uh, if you like uh, since this is only 240 GB I'm not gonna create additional drives I'm just gonna create the entire uh, I'm gonna use the entire 223 into one drive so I'm gonna apply click OK as you can see uh, Windows uh, by default creates these additional partitions partition 1 2 3 it saves partition 1 for recovery uh, partition 2 for system files and partition 3 for MSR reserved uh, it's very uh, small uh, spaces on it 100, 450 MB 99 MB and 16 MB not really concerned about that I'm gonna install the entire operating system in partition 4 as you can see it says drive 0 drive 0 means that it is connected on the SATA 0 connection alright so I'm gonna select uh, partition 4 uh, where the most uh, space is on 223 GB is still on the, uh, the largest partition uh, click next and from here it's gonna start the Windows installing uh, copying files should not take this long I'm gonna pause the video and I will come back but I will let you know how long it took okay so it's already I think uh, a minute and a half or two minutes Alright, so I had started the installation process at 11.27 p.m. Right now it's uh, 11.33 p.m. Alexa, what time is it? It's 11.34 p.m. 34 p.m. So that's uh, almost 7 minutes. It took only 7 minutes to install the operating system. Now from this point forward, this is the just the basic setup. Um, the region is the United States, yes keyboard is US I would not like to add any other keyboard skip that uh, currently I am I don't have any Ethernet connection here so I'm gonna skip that for now that's for the internet um, the username I'll just enter anything password confirm your password next hint I don't have any hint and that's it that's Cortana I don't really like to use that 
the location services and all these diagnostic services I usually don't like to send that so I turn that off and that's it it's gonna set up a profile okay see that's it Windows is installed and I will show you um, the configuration, the speed. Oh. Right click on this PC properties. It's Windows uh, 10 Professional. Processor is Intel Core i7 8700, 3.2 GHz, uh, 16 GB of memory, and this is a 64 bit operating system. I will activate the windows as soon as I have the internet connection. Um, usually Windows 10 installs most of the drivers for the hardware, but if I go to the device manager, you'll see some of the drivers are not installed, which is okay because my main concern was the network adapter and it already installed all the drivers for the network adapter. Um, so all I'm gonna do is as soon as I I'm in front of the switch. I'm gonna plug this computer into the um, into the uh, Ethernet with, via Ethernet cable and download all these drivers. Just double click on that uh, and update the driver, and it'll ask just search automatically for the updated driver uh, on Windows Update. So it will install all those uh, drivers directly from the Windows Update. Other than that, it's all set up. If I go to this PC you can see the hard, the local hard drive which is SSD Windows uh, 10 took 18.4 GB the rest is free this is the USB uh, I should eject that actually and that's it Windows is installed